so next next concept is the transmission lines we can classify into two types one is the lossless line transmission lines we can classify into two types one is the lossless line the other one is the distortionless line one is lossless line and the other one is the distortion line we will see one by one when we will say a line is <coughs> lossless and when we will see a line the transmission line is distortionless line so these are the condition in fact for a lossless line satisfies this condition for a lossless line this has to be satisfied r is equal to 0 c is equal to 0 and similarly for distortion line distortionless line this has to be satisfied r by l is equal to c e by c the ratio of resistance to the inductance should be equal to g by c r you can write in many ways if you cross multiply you will get rc is equal to gl rc is equal to gl resistance and capacitance product should be equal to conductance and inductance so this condition has to be either of the condition is same you can remember any one r by l is equal to g by c or rc is equal to gl so whereas here the line is lossless when r is equal to 0 g is equal to 0 whereas distortionless if r by l is equal to g by c we will see one by one when a line is said to be lossless line and when a line is said to be distortionless line so first we will see lossless transmission line so this is the definition of the lossless transmission line a transmission line is said to be lossless it is said to be lossless if the conductors the conductors of the line are perfect if the conductors of the line are perfect and the dielectric and the dielectric medium separating the conductors right transmission line means we are having two parallel lines so these are nothing but the conductors so these two lines are nothing but the conductors conductors so in between medium in between we will have the the two conductors are separated by a dielectric medium the two conductors are separated by a dielectric medium so when will we say a line is lossless means the conductors of the line are perfect perfect means there is no loss there is no loss so that means r should be equal to zero r should be equal to there should not be any losses on the line so for that r is equal to zero similarly the dielectric medium separating them is also lossless so for that the conductance the conductance has to be zero so for a lossless line we will have this condition the conducting medium the conducting medium should be perfect so there will not be any losses and similarly the dielectric medium separating these two conductors also should be lossless so a line which satisfies both these characteristics are said to be a lossless transmission Line. so for lossless transmission line we will have this condition r is equal to z is equal to 0 for lossless transmission line we will have this condition r is equal to z is equal to 0 that is the conductors of the transmission line should be perfect and the dielectric medium separating the two medium is also lossless so such a line is called as lossless transmission line so for lossless transmission line we will have r is equal to z is equal to 0 so this you have to remember lossless line is when r is equal to z is equal to 0 then only we will say the given transmission line is lossless now for the lossless transmission line we will find the propagation constant and characteristic impedance and phase velocity so in previous classes we have seen the generalized expression for the propagation constant and 
characteristic impedance. In yesterday's class, we have seen the propagation constant and characteristic impedance at microwave frequencies. In today's class, we will see the propagation constant and characteristic impedance for the lossless transmission line as well as the distortionless transmission line. So those two cases we will see in today's class. So for the lossless transmission line, this condition has to be satisfied. R is equal to Z is equal to zero. So these, this condition we will substitute in the propagation constant as well as in the characteristic impedance. So gamma is equal to how is the propagation constant is given. We can write it as alpha plus J beta, which is nothing but square root of R plus J omega L into G plus J omega C. So for a lossless transmission line, this is the condition. R is equal to C is equal to zero. So for lossless transmission, this is the condition that we have. So we have to substitute R is equal to zero. And similarly, we have to substitute Z is equal to zero. So if R is equal to zero, Z is equal to zero, we'll have what you will have J square and omega square and LC. So this J omega is having whole square. So square and root will get cancelled. So that's why we got J omega. And this is simply root LC. So we have the propagation constant for lossless transmission line is given by J omega into root LC. So simply we have substitute R is equal to Z is equal to zero. So this we can compare with alpha plus J beta. So it is not having any real part. So the attenuation constant is zero. Attenuation constant is zero. So there is no attenuation. If the line is lossless, if the line is lossless, the attenuation part, there is no attenuation of the wave when it is propagating along the transmission line. So then if you compare the imaginary part, so from this beta is nothing but omega root L. Beta is nothing but omega root L. So for a lossless transmission line, so the propagation constant simply it is J omega root L. So from that the attenuation constant is zero. So there is no attenuation of the wave when it is propagating along a lossless transmission line. So whereas the phase constant beta is given by simply omega root LC, omega root LC. This expression, the phase constant is similar to the phase constant at microwave frequencies, at microwave frequencies. But alpha is not zero. We have different expression for alpha at microwave frequencies. So alpha is zero only for lossless transmission line. But beta is same, having the same expression, which we found out at microwave frequencies. So next we will see the characteristic impedance. And from this we can find the phase velocity straight away. So phase velocity is nothing but omega by beta. So beta is nothing but, just we have seen, beta is nothing but, omega root LC, omega root LC. So it is one by root LC. So this we can also in we have in earlier classes we have seen this omega you can write two pi f, right? And beta also you can write two pi by lambda, right? So if you substitute, you will get F lambda. So the phase velocity of a lossless transmission line is equal to one by root LC. So that is equal to F lambda, simply F lambda. So this is the same for microwave frequencies also, because beta is same as the expression similar to the microwave frequencies. So the phase velocity is simply dependent on only the beta. As beta is same, so the phase velocity is also same. So next we will see the characteristic impedance. So this is the expression for the 
characteristic impedance. So characteristic impedance, we can write it as root Z by Y. Z is nothing but the impedance, which is given by R plus J omega L. And Y is nothing but the admittance, which is given by Z plus J omega T. Again, for the lossless transmission line, we have R is equal to Z is equal to zero. So if you substitute, if you substitute R is equal to zero and J is equal to zero, what you will have? J omega, J omega will get cancelled. You will have square root of L by C. Square root of L by C. So the characteristic impedance of a lossless transmission line is equal to square root of L by C. Square root of L by C. So simply you have to substitute this for a lossless transmission line. Means R is equal to Z is equal to 0. For lossless transmission line, R is equal to Z is equal to 0. R is equal to Z is equal to 0. So we have the characteristic impedance Z0 is equal to root L by C. So our, we can write it as R0 plus plus R minus J X0. R0 is the real part and X0 is the imaginary part. So if you compare, this is simply purely real. It is not having any imaginary part. Imaginary part is 0. So we can get R0 is equal to square root of L by C. That is nothing but Z0. Whereas as we are not having any imaginary part, so simply the imaginary part is Zero. Imaginary part x naught is zero. So whereas the real part real part is nothing but square root of L by C. real part is square root of L by C. So I hope it is clear to everyone. Are any doubts you are having? If you like the video, please share, like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get latest video updates.